What's up guys, Luke from 8-Bit Plus back again and we just got done watching the Xbox Game Showcase and to everyone that joined the live stream over at Facebook Gaming, I want to thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Oh my god, where's my Xbox? But wow, there is a lot to be excited for. So in this video, we're going to be going over all the games announced and I'm going to give you my first impressions of them. We got a lot of games to talk about, so sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe, and let's get right into it. The first game on our list is Halo Infinite. Until you step inside. It's probably the game we're all most excited to see more about. And we got a chance to take a look at about 10 minutes or so of gameplay. And I have to say, I'm really excited for this one. The gameplay looks smooth and fresh with a new grappling hook that Master Chief wields and can be used for grappling onto ledges to reach new heights, as well as to pull items towards your character. Like those pillar beams from the older games that can be shot and explode. Also, it seems as though there's kind of a sandbox style of map where you have a series of small maps that you can explore and take care of missions in your own order. I seriously doubt this is an open world game, but it certainly gives you the choice as to how you finish levels. As far as the graphics department goes, this game is a little bit underwhelming. In my opinion, the textures look like they were developed for the Xbox 360 with the character models. However, the draw distance is pretty insane and the game has some pretty beautiful landscapes. We'll have to wait till the full game releases though to make judgments on the visuals. But needless to say, this one will be a day one Game Pass download for me and possibly a physical purchase as well. The next announcement was the State of Decay 3. I haven't played the first two games, but now I want to give them a try. The graphics on this one look really good, and from the looks of it, you are fighting in a post-apocalyptic world, which is starting to get pretty worn out, but still, this one looks pretty cool. I'll have to check out the first two and see if I should be excited about this one or not. <laughs> I really don't know. The next game the Xbox showed us was Forza Motorsport. And I told you what my opinion was about racing games in, on the PS5 Future Gaming Showcase reaction video, but we didn't get too much to go off of with this one. Pretty much just some exotic cars revving their engines and a title. But I'm sure for Forza fans, this is great but it's not really something I'm too interested in. The fourth game Microsoft showed us was Everwild. And wow, this game looks beautiful. From the trailer, it looks like a game where your main mission is to work together to restore the wilderness. This isn't a ton to go off of, but I'm excited to jump into some games that aren't so shoot 'em up bang bang for a while. And this one looks like it would be a great option. Still early to judge, but I'm still pretty excited to see more. Whoa. I just got hit with a flood of memories. The next game we were shown was Tell Me Why. And this game looked interesting. I'm not gonna say this game is for me, but it does seem like one of those interactive drama games, kind of like Until Dawn or Beyond Two Souls. Not really a genre that I've been able to get hooked on, but the story does seem to be pretty compelling and this also might be one of those games that I can bait my non-gamer wife into trying out one of these weekends. We'll see. Next game was a bit of a quickie and I'm gonna make this one a quickie too. It was Ori and the Will of the Wisp in 4K, 240 Hertz. This game is beautiful and is a game that has been on my backlog for a long time now. The 120 Hertz doesn't do much for me because well, I don't have a 120 Hertz monitor to play it on, but it still serves as a reminder that I need to play this freaking game. And the seventh game that we were shown was the Outer Worlds DLC, 
Peril on Gorgon. I still need to play the base game till I can get too excited about this one, but it does look pretty fun. I'm sure people will enjoy this. And the next game was Grounded, and here we go, baby. This game looks really cool. I'm catching some Fortnite vibes with this one, and as you probably know if you watch my live stream, Fortnite is one of my guilty pleasures that I like to bust out every few months and re-fall in love with. So this is gonna be right up my alley, I'm sure. It's like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the video game. Humorous and looks like it has some multiplayer co-op, hopefully couch co-op, but still, I'll take what I can get. We'll have to wait and see to get more information on this one. Avowed was the ninth game shown, and this one looks like a Skyrim on steroids. Beautiful visuals, amazing sound design, but that's going off the trailer, and those tend to be pretty deceiving. However, I'm still pretty psyched about this one. Can't wait to hear more. On the ground, now! The sun went down on all of us that day. The 10th game shown was Dusk Falls, an interactive drama with interesting art style from the trailer, but I just hope that the whole game isn't just that. I mean, what do you call it? Paper Mario graphics? But other than the graphics, I'm sure it's a pretty good story. We just need to see more before we get too excited on this one. Well, then we got a quick look into what Ninja Theory was doing with Hailblade Senua's Saga. Uh, no new gameplay, but more information about the setting of the game, along with a documentary of the location that the game is based on. I'm actually going to watch this because I'd like to see how close they get to replicating the location in the game itself. Other than that, nothing really new to talk about here. Dude! Psychonauts 2. Lost alone. The long-awaited sequel to the first game that released for the PS2 and original Xbox back in 2005. Big beautiful visuals, cool looking platforming and combat. I'm sure the music and sound design is going to be wonderful as well with Jack Black just jamming out. It was it was it was kind of corny, but still really cool, dude. It's Jack Black. That's I guess that's pretty awesome. I can't wait to see a release date for this one. Uh, gonna be a great game when it comes to uh, comes out. I'm sure. I'm really glad that there are so many cool 3D platformers being announced for both systems this year. It's gonna be good to let games get to be just that, games, and not just real life simulators where it's like extremely heavy. So I'm really excited to jump into these 3D platformers. So Destiny 2 is coming to Game Pass and uh, I, I, I guess that's something to be excited about. I, I really don't know, but uh, was anyone asking for this? I guess this is cool, but I've always looked at Destiny as a game that should just be free to play already. I mean, it's kind of, it kind of is, unless you count the launch of the game or and when the DLCs come out. But after a few months, everything always seems to end up being free. I guess this is cool if you're a Destiny fan, but uh, don't all Destiny fans already have this stuff? Anyways, uh, moving on. <laughs> Stalker 2. Uh, I've never heard of this one, but I researched it and it looks like it's a sequel to the original Stalker that released on the PC back in 2007. And just the PC. That's why I've never heard of it. But this one looks pretty cool. I always thought that Chernobyl was a great setting for a game. From the trailer, the game looks pretty interesting. I'd like to see more uh, gameplay on this one for sure. Warhammer 40k Darktide. Warhammer is another game that I've just never played, so I can't comment too much. But maybe one of you can enlighten us in the comments. We didn't see much, but it looks cool. We will see. Tetris Effect! 
This is probably the best way to play Tetris. This game is amazing, atmospheric and rhythmic. I never thought that I would be still in love with Tetris in 2020, but I am, and I can't think of a better way to play Tetris than this. In this version of the game, it looks like they added a few optimizations, which is weird because the game is so basic, you would think it's already pretty dang optimized at this point. However, maybe there is something we're missing. Or maybe that's Xbox's new buzzword optimizations. I'm thinking the latter. But they did add a new multiplayer mode and I'm sure I'm stretching when I say this, but it would be amazing to see a battle royale mode. Oh my gosh, my life would be complete. The Gunk. Another cool looking indie game and from the trailer it looks like you are a space traveler that lands on a mysterious planet Ooh. and soon discover that the planet needs your help. You have this Luigi's Mansion like vacuum that sucks up all the gunk so you can navigate through the world. This one looks pretty interesting and I cannot wait to see more. Then we got another look at the medium. And I have to say, this trailer did way better of a job of getting me excited for this game than the showcase back in May. As you know, if you've been watching my videos, I have been in a coming of age period with the horror genre, and I just can't get enough of it. And in this game, I'm getting some pretty real horror vibes. It looks like you have dual realities that you're dealing with and you have to keep track of both. I assume you will be able to switch back and forth at will and in order to solve puzzles and defeat enemies, uh, you have to use that back and forth mechanic. This one looks super cool and I can't wait. Are you serious? A new Fantasy Star Online game. I know a lot of people are excited about this one for sure. These uber Japanese action RPGs never really interest me. I just don't have enough time to give them a shot. But with that being said, this game looks pretty sick sword fighting and gun fighting with the option to switch back and forth depending on the enemy you're fighting, a team to help you to take down enemies and epic enemies to take down, coupled with a large open world, there isn't much to not get excited about for this one. Now I love me a good military style campaign shooter and Crossfire X looks just like that. Luis Torres, I've seen your future. This game is probably the most visually appealing game I've seen during the entire show. A lot of that can be attributed to it was an actual gameplay, unfortunately, but it still looks very interesting. Uh, the story uh, looks really interesting as well, but we'll have to see. I look forward to hearing more about this one for sure. Okay, before we talk about Fable, I want to let you know that this isn't the end of the line for what Xbox is going to have to offer. Right before Fable, if you're paying attention, they said that they would later this year be showing more Xbox exclusives coming to the Series X. Now, you may have noticed we didn't get to visit all of our Xbox Game Studios today. That means we'll have more to share later this year. And this just gets me jacked. We still have more to hear about probably before the console launches. So for those of you that have been hoping for a new Perfect Dark game, we still might get our wish, maybe. Not all stories have happy endings. A new Fable game. 
We didn't see much other than a little intro video with a fairy getting swallowed up by a toad, which was pretty hilarious by the way, but it's a freaking fable game. Now, I'm gonna be honest and say that I've only completed the first Fable game, but I've played all of them and they were awesome experiences. I'm super excited to hear more about this one for sure in the coming months. Wow, what an awesome presentation. This showcase was packed full of stuff to be excited about. As for me, I'm super excited to hear more about Fable, The Medium, Psychonauts, Grounded, and of course, Halo Infinite. I will say that a lot of what we saw in the showcase was trailers, but I'm thinking that this was strategically done this way. Remember that a lot of the games we saw today were world premieres. Yes, it would have been great to see gameplay of the, all these games, but in order to do that, the showcase would have been two plus hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. But seriously, I think we will see a lot more gameplay as we get closer to the console's launch date. Speaking of launch dates, we still don't have one, nor do we have a price on the console. And I personally think that we won't until the PS5 price happens. Remember, Xbox is coming off a semi-successful, but pretty rocky previous generation. And they are ready to pull out all the stops to ensure this generation is better as well as waiting for PS5 to announce their price so that they can undercut it. But that's enough for me. I wanna know what you guys think. The Xbox game showcase last week, did you like it? Did it come up short, meet, or exceed your expectations? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you got value out of this video, do me a big favor and smash like, as well as subscribe with bell notifications turned on for more content like this. And lastly, we do have a Patreon for those of you that are interested in supporting us and would like some extra content like behind the scenes of our unboxing videos and seeing YouTube content days, weeks, and months before they go live on YouTube. But until next time, guys, Loot from 8-Bit Plus, signing out, and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.